Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. While I have your attention, I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. Following me and sharing my videos is really important because I'm a one-man shop with no money for advertising or anything else. And so social media is the way that I grow. So please follow me on Twitter at SYL Tales and any other social media. I'm on all of them known to man, probably some you've never even heard of. And you can find them in the About page for this channel. I would appreciate your support via a page on my website, SYLRanch.tv. And there's a link to that in my description box. You remember last week when I talked about Marvel's The New Warriors and how the characters are stupid SJW wokeness that have more in common with DC's satire super team, The Inferior Five? There's a link to that video in my description box. Well, apparently DC looked at that stupid idea for a comic book, thought about it for a while, and then asked Marvel to hold its beer. So while I'm going to risk something of a copyright strike, let's just take a look at the video trailer for DC's dumbest graphic novel yet, a trailer that as this, of this recording has over 13,000 downvotes out of about 86,200 views. Let's just have a look at this hunk of crap, shall we? Oh, the bats, of course. They, it's the Gotham bats. Why... Why would it be the Gotham Bats? Why? That just doesn't make any damn sense. Bruce Wayne doesn't have followers. He's a freaking loner. He wouldn't care about followers. Oh, how stupid. Oh, how stupid. This is just, it's just dumb. It's just dumb. Melissa de la Cruz, remember that name. Oh, man. How dumb can it be? Okay. Well... I guess at least it's only a graphic novel rather than an ongoing monthly book. So why is this so wrong? If you can't see it right off the bat, top of your head, why, why is this so wrong? It's just so incredibly wrong and just cringe inducing and face palming on so many different levels. Here's what this has thing has to say on the website. I'm going to read this in my usual uh, attempt at an Ernie Anderson voice at, uh, you know, poorly. <clears throat> From the number one New York Times best-selling author of Alex and Eliza and The Witches of East End comes a reimagining of Gotham for a new generation of readers. Before they became Batman, Catwoman, and the Joker, Bruce, Selina, and Jack were high schoolers who would do whatever it took, even destroy the ones they love, to satisfy their own motives. After being kicked out of a boarding school, 16-year-old Bruce Wayne returns to Gotham City to find that nothing is as he left it. What was once his family home is now an empty husk, lonely but haunted by the memory of his parents' murder. Selina Kyle, once the innocent girl next door, now rules over Gotham High School with a dangerous flair, aided by the class clown Jack Napier. When a kidnapping rattles the school, Bruce seeks answers as the dark and troubled knight. But is he actually the pawn? Nothing is ever as it seems, especially at Gotham High, where the parties and romances are of the highest stakes and where everyone is a suspect. With Enchanting Art by Thomas Pitilli, this new graphic novel is just as intoxicating as it is chilling, in which dear friends turned into greatest enemies, all within the hallways of Gotham High. <sighs> yeah, that, that sounds probably about as stupid as it is. You can see some of the uh, pages going past over here. Um, the... <laughs> They're on the DC website. Uh, fair use for both this and the trailer, guys. Fair use. Oh, so why is this so wrong? Okay, to start out with, Bruce Wayne is a fracking billionaire. That he only has one butler is rather amazing in and of itself. He really, his butlers should have butlers. That's how rich he is. And I don't think that he could get kicked out of boarding school because it turns out that a sufficiently large check will generally get people to look past what you may have done and Bruce Wayne can write some very large checks. And even if he managed to get kicked out of one expensive school for rich kids, there are only a billion others to choose some from. I mean, 
Omaha, Nebraska, right? A city of about a million and uh, about a half an hour away from me. I can name at least three different expensive prep schools. In a city of size of Gotham, there must be a dozen or more. So if Bruce Wayne managed to get himself kicked out of a private school with all its rules, and I have to tell you, they do have rules. I attended one of those Omaha prep schools for three years. How is he going to fare in a public school? There is absolutely no valid reason for Bruce Wayne to ever attend a modern, crappy public school where they don't even teach you to read. The idea is ridiculous on the face of it. Melissa de la Cruz may have written some novels aimed at teenage girls, but this does not qualify her to write about a teenaged Batman. And as for Jack Napier the Joker, where, where do you start? And to be honest, my favorite incarnation of the Joker is Jack Nicholson's portrayal in Tim Burton's 1989 Batman. He was a low-level mobster, mid-level, who started out as a small-time mugger when he was a teenager. And I actually do like changing Batman's origin to have Jack Napier murdering Batman's parents, Bruce's parents. I think that it's actually more dramatic than having it just be some random thug. However, no matter what your favorite origin interpretation may be, the Joker simply can't be a class clown who happened to go nuts when dipped in a vat of chemicals. Because if the Joker is just a class clown, he wouldn't go on to be a criminal. He'd be too well adjusted for that. He'd, he'd either be a stand-up comedian or a sitcom writer or something like that. The Joker just being some funny guy attending high school is just stupid beyond words. Melissa de la Cruz may have written some novels aimed at teenage girls, but this does not qualify her to write about a teenage joker. And then there's Selena Kyle, the Catwoman. Oh, my God. You know, my favorite origin of this character actually comes from Frank Miller's Batman Year One, and in that, Selena is a hooker to start out with. But in any case, she is a literal cat burglar. She scales walls to get into places like museums and expensive jewelry stores. The idea that she'd be in a high school love triangle with Bruce Wayne, who shouldn't be there in the first place, and Jack Napier, who shouldn't be there in the first place, is just plain stupid. Melissa de la Cruz may have written novel some novels aimed at teenage girls, but this does not qualify her to write about a teenage cat woman. And none of these characters should even know each other. Having the characters know each other as teenagers is just beyond ludicrous. I mean, it was bad enough when Lex Luthor knew Superboy in, the small, in Smallville during the Silver Age. However, comics that by act then were marketed to 12-year-old boys, and boys and this 12-year-old boy reading that, I thought it was kind of cool. But doing with Batman, the Joker, and Catwoman is really, really stupid. It just completely undercuts their futures as criminals and adults. These characters should only ever meet as adults, adversaries, and with Catwoman, potentially tenuous kind of friend, and that's all. Melissa de la Cruz may have written some novels aimed at teenage girls, but this does not qualify her to write about these characters, neither as teenagers nor as adults. Now, as I mentioned in my uh, video last week, Marvel has gone insane. It is patently obvious that the inmates are running the asylum at both Marvel and DC. They are slitting their own throats. Hell, there are rumors that DC is one multi-book crossover from ceasing publication. DC, you need to fire everyone on your staff and ha hire me. Now, I'm a DC guy. I have been since I discovered comic books as a child, and I understand the source material far better than any of you hack frauds writing right now. So AT&T, you are the new owners of DC, I know. So I know how to fix your entire problem. I know how to make DC profitable again. First of all, fire every single one of those hack frauds that you've got working for you. They have no idea what they're doing. Not a single one of those idiots does. And then hire me as your new editor-in-chief. And then cease publication for 12 months. At the end of that time, I will have hired a team that can create and maintain a consistent multi-book universe. We will not be rebooting every five years to correct the mistakes that hack frauds inevitably make. Now, we're going to have to cut the comic book stores loose.
and comic store owners, I'm really sorry about that. However, comic publishers have been making a serious mistake by marketing to anything other than comics' natural market, which is 12-year-old boys. We need to put DC's comics on the grocery store's impulse buy shelves right next to the tabloids, and that's because we will finally be aiming comics at the, the appropriate demographic of 12-year-old boys. They'll buy comics just as they did 30 to 40 years ago by pestering their mothers at the checkout. Now, that doesn't mean that we'll be telling stupid stories. It means that we'll be telling good, entertaining stories with character development that leave out the nihilism, political correctness, and stupidity. You can look just at the DC animated universe. That's something both adults and children can enjoy. That's what we'll be shooting for. Sort of. I have a much bigger plan than that. But if you hire anyone other than me to run DC AT&T, then you are signing the death warrant of DC, both in comics and in film. It is just as simple as that. I can save your ass. No one else can. So call me, like right now. And that is all that I have to say about that. I would love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. So thanks for watching. That's all the time that we have today for this episode of Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.